At the heart of Havana, Cuba, lies a clinic in Vedado Town, one of the hundreds dotted across this country whose healthcare system is world renowned. Here, Dr. Rodriguez Lao attends to her latest patient, Maria. Maria is diabetic and has high blood pressure, but Maria is more than just a patient. She is also the doctor's neighbor, and so is everyone here. In la comunidad. I live here in the community, same as the nurse. I am a family sea. doctor in family medicine. Pulse graduated in 1986. Dr. Rodriguez lives in this apartment. Her house and that of the nurse is just a floor above her clinic. Among our functions here is uh, prevention with the patients. We also do... Uh, healthcare or, or, or curation, rehabilitation, and we also do education and research. She knows all her patients and where they come from because every afternoon part of her job involves planned house visits. We do consultation during the morning from 8 a.m. to noon. Then we have one hour of lunch time. From 1 to 5 p.m. we have a scheduled uh, field visit, so we visit our patients in their homes. After today, Dr. Rodriguez will still visit Maria at her home to know about her living conditions, about the house, housing conditions, lighting, ventilation the environment and relations with the other family members, whether their relations are functional or not, whether there is a condition that can uh, worsen the health uh, uh, condition of the patient. Depending on this, we can classify families as functional or dysfunctional. The doctor is also required to visit families at least once a year. And this is the genesis of the great success of the Cuban healthcare system. Cuban model focuses on primary health care, plus curative at the last mile, whereby people, as much as possible, are taken care of at the nearest health facility, the lowest health facility, in a more comprehensive manner in order to minimize referrals upwards. Adjacent is the Vedado Polyclinic. It receives patients seconded from the clinic who require further attention. The Vedado Polyclinic, for example, has had zero maternal deaths for 14 years and counting, zero infant mortality for seven years, and over a decade they have completely stopped mother-to-child transmission of HIV and AIDS. A sharp contrast with Kenya, where the number of women who die from childbirth is at least 362 out of every 100,000 births, translating to about 22 women dying daily in childbirth. That has been thanks to uh, um, the, the working together of all the doctors and the nurses that are here implicit in the, in the work of the polyclinic and also the Cuban model of uh, the interrelation between the, uh, the mother and the family physician that um, carries uh, a strong political will. Without political will, we, can ex we can't exhibit those indicators. But Cuba is many light years ahead. They kicked out malaria, for instance, in 1966. The essence of having a healthcare system is to help the people. In Cuba, access to medical care is prioritized. For example, if you live on this street, you literally just have to walk across the street to access your family doctor. The polyclinic is much like the dispensaries in Kenya, but with more services and with monthly visits by at least 20 specialists. The Vedado Polyclinic serves 39,000 residents who are attended to for free. We can strengthen our health centers to the extent that actually it is self-sufficient in the sense that 
you get uh, personnel even at higher level based at the health center. The visits by the family doctors to individuals and families contributes greatly to the success of this system. Here, more effort is put on prevention. The constant checkups aid in early diagnosis and management of chronic diseases, thereby reducing the overall cost of health care. The music helps in setting the pace. It's about 8 a.m. and in one of the parks in Havana, the elderly stretch. Keeping feet is part of the Cuban doors. Between 6 or 8 o'clock in the morning, two hours, I practice three times a week. Our teacher is... Uh, uh, 86 years old. We practice first of all uh, for our health. The second one is to have coordinates uh, in our movements. Cuatro. Uno. Such are the scenes here every morning and evening. And it's not just the old, everyone is part of this national ritual. And there's everything to show for it. Life expectancy in Cuba stands at an impressive 81 years for women and 77 for men. Health coverage is at 100%. With the pronouncement of UHC for all by the year 2020 by His Excellency the President, it's only fair that we summon all the system, the subsystems within the sector, fix what must be fixed and deliver to Wanjiku what they deserve. It's their constitutional right, there is political commitment. <laughs> Kenya's MOU with Cuba will see 100 Cuban doctors working in Kenya starting June and 50 Kenyan doctors traveling to Cuba for training. We met up with three of the doctors seconded to Kenya. Katiuska, a radiologist, says she's looking forward to the experience. She leave her eight-year-old daughter in Cuba to serve in Kenya for at least two years. I, I am a radiologist. I have four years experience. I work at General Hospital. Um, I perform a different studies, such as a different type of ultrasound. Victor Manuel has previously worked in Ghana. The neurosurgeon says he agreed to the terms of working in the villages of Kenya, not in the big cities. I'm very happy. The possibility to go to practice medicine, to do all the medicine for the people. It's a one condition for the, all the doctors in Cuba, all the medicine. Some of the highest paid doctors in Cuba get an equivalent of 6,700 Kenya shillings per month, while a nurse gets the equivalent of 4,000 Kenya shillings. The Cuban state, however, offers them free housing. The work ethic of the doctors, yeah, because uh, we... I've noticed that they are paid uh, not as much as our people back at home, but uh, their dedication to duty is very, very impressive. The motivation for which doctors and health workers get into this profession, and to me, the few that I've interacted with tell me it is a way of life. They don't go there because they want to make bucks, but they go there because it's a calling. Nakuya Kenya. Okay. Cuba has sent 107,000 doctors around the world. The 100 headed to Kenya include nine critical care physicians, three cardiologists, five orthopedic surgeons, three plastic reconstructive surgeons, five nephrologists, three urologists, one neurosurgeon, two endocrinologists, and 53 family physicians. And so the specialized doctors who we are bringing today 
as really a drop of the, in the ocean of what we may require. But it's a starting point. We'll invest in it, but we'll invest in it with the aim of using them to train and capacity build and also mentor our own uh, doctors. I, I will not like to a situation where we are pitting these doctors against our doctors. And I think that is, is, is a misconception. It's not like that. It is, we have number one, our Kenyan doctors who we will continue training, who will continue to, to increase our doctor-patient ratio using our own human resource. But at this particular time, when we are doing universal uh, healthcare, universal healthcare is not just about NHIF card. Kenya has a doctor-patient ratio of 1 to 17,000 against the WHO recommendation of 1 to 1,000. C.S. Kariuki says the model working in Cuba is to assist the country in achieving universal health care by 2022. Critics argue that the political will is key. A lot of the success here is attributed to the former Cuban president, Fidel Castro's two pillars of the Cuban revolution, health and education, all of which are free in Cuba. Truth be told, um, there are challenges facing the health sector in Kenya today. Um, but importantly, is that with His Excellency, the president's pronouncement of health as one of his big four pillars for the next five years. Um, fresh energy and positive energy has been summoned across the national government but also the county government. The doctors, the CS says, will hopefully inject culture and positive attitude in the rural healthcare systems, service with humility. We will be paying to bring uh, these doctors into Kenya. We will also be paying their salaries. Um, the county governments, on the other hand, will be responsible for housing them. We'll also be responsible for ensuring the logistical requirements that the movement around the counties and across counties is also going to be realized. Although this exchange program has sparked mixed reactions in Kenya, government hopes to transfer the structural strengths of the Cuban system. The system in Cuba curb corruption and resource waste. Kenya, on the other hand, ails from corrupt systems, leading to mistrust of public health facilities by patients. The lower tier facilities suffer the biggest brunt, lack of resources at dispensaries, level 4 and 5 facilities, prompting patients to opt to the referral hospitals. Meanwhile, family doctors in Cuba do daily visits to residents, making the system heavy on prevention measure as opposed to Kenya's curative system. A confidential report of 2018 indicates that most Kenyan mothers die at childbirth after 5 p.m. and over the weekends. The Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Union has, however, openly opposed the move to import medics from the Caribbean nation, saying it will be an unnecessary burden to the Kenyan taxpayers. What we need is the Cuban system, not the Cuban doctors. Um, but having said that, um, I think also it is important for me to clarify, Kenyan doctors do not have a problem with doctors from all over the world, anywhere. Uh, in fact, Kenyan doctors work all over the world. I take home the fact that uh, the system is working, it's simple, it's not complicated, it's not uh, um, heavy on investment, but uh, effective. The little resources with a political will and commitment, it can be done. They started off as a very poor country, yet they are where they are with the health uh, delivery system. So even for us, who have more resources, we are able to do this with commitment. The argument might take a while to resolve. What is not in doubt is that the country's healthcare system is in critical condition. The question now is whether the Cuban doors will indeed bring it back to life. There's a popular phrase here among the Cubans. They tell us that they believe that everything is possible, but only if you try doing it. And this, they say, they apply in all aspects of their lives. 
the Cuban healthcare system would be one perfect example that anything is possible, but only if you try it. Masi Kandietanui, Citizen TV, Havana, Cuba. Thank you.